Seahawks Weekly, your all-access pass to everything Seahawks. Now here's your host, G. Scott. Uh, we're back right here for Seahawks Weekly right here at Pearl Seafood and Oyster Bar. That's right, we're Seahawks Weekly presented by Bud Light and brought to you by Harris Just Distilling's Batch Number 12 Vodka, Sparkling Ice, Legendary Donuts. And our guest this evening, he's just now joining us, Cliff Faber, everybody. That's all I get? That's all he got. Oh, if, I, if I was Mike Bennett, they'd go crazy. Right, yeah, if it was Mike Bennett. <laughs> Well, you That's know as what? good of a response as we got for anybody. For anybody. We haven't yeah, got that. I appreciate that. Uncle Cliff. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Cliff. <laughs> what, why is it that I call you Uncle Cliff? I don't know, man. I don't know why you call me. Tell people why you call me Uncle Cliff. Because you're too young. You got an old soul. That's why. You, and sometimes you can be cranky and you like to talk bad about what I wear all the yeah, time. Yeah. You, you see what you got on now? I, <laughs> what I'm wearing is okay. It is shiny. Are we doing an auction tonight? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, shiny. Well, we'll, we'll make fun of each other later. Let's talk okay, about okay, football okay, right okay, now. Okay, okay. Hey, this right now, the Seahawks right now, you guys are one and one mm -hmm. after two games, of course. Uh, tell us that everything is going to be okay and why. <laughs> Of course, everything's going to be okay. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the beginning of the season, man. We're still getting a feel for everything. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely confident in, in the players that we have, the, the scheme, um, the personnel. I think, I think we're all right, man. Um, you know, sometimes you got to take an L to, to, to keep moving forward. But I think we're going to be all right for sure. Now, you, you said sometimes you have to take an L. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> You Seahawks have really done a good job of, let's say, spoiling it. us fans, right? Because we're just so mm, used to you guys winning. Yeah. Do you do you guys take losses the way we fans take losses? Of like course. it hurts us. <laughs> I mean, we be we be hurt. No, of course we take uh, we take it hard, man. Um, I mean, we don't want to lose any games. Obviously, uh, you know the goal is to continue to keep getting better each and every day, uh, each each week. You know, to go out there and perform, perform in front of the 12s and, and put on a good show. You know what, Cliff? The thing that strikes me about you the most is you make one hell of a car commercial. <laughs> he does. He's awesome. I need some more sponsorships, by the way. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to campaign for you because, you know, here's the one thing that I really have noticed that you're really good at is you know what to do with your hands. Yes. You know when you're standing there on TV and you're like, you don't know what to do with your hands? It can get, it can get awkward. Yeah, it does get awkward. And you did a really good job with that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, uh, shout out to Mercedes Benz uh, of Seattle. Um, yeah, I don't know if I was supposed partners. to do that or not. But <laughs> I, I, well, hey, it's what, coming from me. I, I don't know. It's good for <laughs> you. you guys don't mind taking taking that on, though. I mean, like, we sit there and talk about because Paul and I were part of a defense. We had a historically bad offense, <laughs> but you know, and we had a really good defense. But, yeah. you know, when the other side's struggling, a lot of people think that there's, like, a rivalry going on or something like that. But you guys being so good the way you are, you don't mind taking that on right now. No, I mean – I mean, it's, it's a defense. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a team sport at the end of the day. And our job on defense is to get the offense to the ball as many times as possible. And that's how we look at it. We don't really necessarily care what they do with it. But as long as we continue to give them the ball and give them more opportunities, that's our job. And to get turnovers. And, and you know, those are coming as well. Well, how about the turnovers? Because, you know, I think a lot of times it's luck. I mean, you guys work for it. You're probably one of the best in the league as far as the strip sack thing. Yes. I mean, you do a great job with that. But... You know, sometimes it's like the other day in the, the Ram game, ball pops up in the air yeah. and it looked like, oh, man, you could get there. And you just sometimes it just doesn't go your way. No doubt. No doubt. But that's definitely something we strive to continue to keep getting better at, though. Um, I mean, we have a whole day dedicated to turnovers. Today was the day, actually, turnover Thursday. We have a day that's dedicated to getting turnovers and, and just getting the, the, the mental part of it and understanding that we have to continue to keep trying to get them. Uh, and again, to give the offense as many opportunities uh, to score as possible. You guys, number one defense in the NFL, number one against scoring. I mean, and by the way, those are the expectations, right? That's fine. So, it, but it, so sometimes you go, okay, the obvious. They said turnovers. As a defense, though, we're also going. Look, we got to win games. No so, doubt. what are you guys talking about right now that you got to get better at? I'm a firm believer of control what you can control. You know. Um, I don't play on offense. I'm not the quarterback. I'm not the running back. So my job, again, is to get sacks and, and make the plays I'm supposed to make. You know, I don't, I don't look at the other side of the ball. Our job, again, each and every time we go out there is, again, if we can, you know, get turnovers and try to score, obviously. But, again, to continue to keep giving the offense the ball, um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't worry about what they're doing. Well, the reason why I say that is there, there's times where you, 
the head coach has a game plan. And yes. it's not just, okay, defense, you do this. Offense, yeah. you do this. It's, hey, offense, we're going to struggle a little bit. And coaches, defense. I don't know we've if got, coaches ever said, hey, offense, well, you're going to struggle. I, maybe not bit. to you guys, but they're thinking, what can we do with this offense? Maybe we can score 17 points. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is just a field position game. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious, do you guys ever have the conversation going into a game that, we have to do this for us to win. I don't think we go into a game saying, hey, you know, we have to, you know, uh, score on defense. That's just something we want to do anyways. You know what I mean? Um, but in the midst of the game, you know, everybody's looking at each other like it's about that time for us to, you know, make something happen to, to either put points on the board or give the offense great field position, you know. So we, we'll go into the game, you know, with that mindset of, hey, continue to give the offense the ball as many times as possible without allowing the other team to score. But, you know, come third quarter, we're like, hey, let's make something happen. Let's, make, let's be special. Let's do something great and try to score. You know, it hasn't happened yet, but I, I definitely believe we can make it happen they, this they, year. They'll come. Well, most definitely. They come in bunches, they, they say. We're joined here by Cliff A. We're here on Seahawks Weekly. And speaking of things that you can control, and speaking of sacks, well, who do Where'd you get that sack dance from? Like, how do you work on your sack dance? Like, do you practice in the mirror in front of your kids? Or do you get like, how does that, where does that come from, Uncle Cliff? It's, it's second nature now. Uh, you know, I just, uh, it, it started off, you know, just, uh, I'm a boiler maker. So our whole thing is, you know, boiler up or whatever. I, can you just show everybody? No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. Google. <laughs> Google. <laughs> um, no, so it just started off doing that, and then it just gradually just became something I just continue to do naturally uh, once I get a sack. I've, I've been blessed to be able to get a few of them, so I've worked on it on Sundays. Well, you, you do look good <laughs> doing it. I got to tell you, of, of the things about you, Cliff, I've known you since you've gotten here to Seattle, mm -hmm. and of the things that you do, my least favorite quality about you <laughs> is that you can sack a quarterback. And I say that because some of the best things that you do, and I want to talk about this. Man, you build houses, bro. <laughs> I mean, you build houses, you build schools. Yeah. You build schools over in Haiti. Let me repeat one more time. Not only does he sack quarterbacks, yes. he builds schools. Yes. Tell us about that because, you know, it, it, it amazes me. You know, you'll get in the paper for sacking a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. But, man, you need to get in the paper more for building schools. How's that going for you, by the way? Uh, it's going great. Um, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the media, uh, they, you know, it's all about football. That's all you do. That's what they want to, you know, kind of hype up. But a lot of guys are doing a lot of great things in the community. Uh, but for me, you know, I'm Haitian, obviously. Well, that's not obvious, but I'm Haitian. <laughs> and, and this offseason, I decided I wanted to um, go out and, and build a school in Haiti. And I was fortunate enough, you know, Marshawn and a few other guys throughout the league uh, to go with me. And uh, we're building an elementary school. We've, actually, my wife and Jeanette, who runs my foundation, they're going back um, next week, right after my foundation uh, dinner. They're going back next week to actually open up the first two classrooms. Well, uh, speaking awesome. of um, Marshawn being there, just tell the truth, man. <laughs> it was hot out there. It was 100-plus yes. degrees. Yes. Bruh, why is Marshawn in his hoodie? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, too. Every single day at the football camp. I mean, <laughs> putting cement together, uh, you know, talking to the kids. The whole time he's in sweat, uh, he's in like a, a hoodie. And I'm like, bro, you have to be baking. And I guarantee you smell bad right now. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee oh. it. But uh, he's like, man, I'm, no, I'm cooler than you guys. I'm like, no, you're burning up right now. Yeah, just because you got some beast mode. Yeah. You got air conditioning <laughs> stuff in there. I don't know about that. Yeah, no, we, were, we was worried about Sean. I'm not going to lie. We was worried. I'm like, you're going to be dehydrated. You're going to pass out out here, man. It's hot. You know, the, the Big Ten is back. Um, how does is it, it? How's a kid from, hey, it looks like it. How's a kid from Florida get to Purdue? Man, uh, honestly, when I was choosing schools, it, it boiled down to one, uh, I mean, kids you know, put your, uh, close your ears, but it was all about really the fastest way of getting out of school, you know, being able to go to school and try to play four years and get out of there. I didn't want to, I didn't want to redshirt, you know, so uh, that was the, the, the biggest thing for me. And, you know, I could have went to Maryland, but at the time they had Sean Merriman who was dominating, you know, yeah. I was like, well, I have to sit out a year if I went there and then a couple other schools. So that was the, the one school outside of education where I wanted to go and play early, you know, and I, and I ended up starting as a true freshman. What, what kind of an athlete were you in high school? 
Cliff, did you did okay. you play other sports? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was a decent athlete. Um, yeah, I, I, I did football. You know, in Florida, obviously, football is almost like a year-round thing. You know, uh, you got the fall, and then you got spring football. But then between then, I have I played basketball. I was on track. Um, well, I threw the shot put on track. I, I hated running. And then yeah. in, in Florida, weightlifting is a is a, a actual competition thing too. So I did all that stuff. So what do you brag about in the locker room that you were good at other than football? Basketball. With the guys? Basketball. I was, uh, the, every he NFL could, player he can't thinks no that he is the best basketball player. Well, I tell basketball. you what, um, we do have some good basketball players in uh, in our locker room. I mean, this uh, during even during the, the off season, you know, me, Bobby, Mike B, some of us would get together and go to like. LA Fitness or something like that, and pretty much run the show <laughs> the whole time. But uh, we have we have some good we have some good basketball. Okay, the players. best way to find out the best basketball player is to ask you who's the best basketball player. You're not allowed to say yourself. I wouldn't say myself. Okay. Um, Jermaine Curse is pretty good. Okay. Uh, Bobby is probably. The, at the top of the list. Is he, he, is he a shooter? Is he like Stephon Curry type of guy? The best, no, the, no, the best shooters. Curse. The best shooters. Tyler Lockett. Tyler really? Lockett just got the belt. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. He, 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 right? But I've never actually seen him on the court, though. We, you know, we have a, we have a basketball goal in um, the team meeting room. We have a little competition, yeah. or whatever. Tyler dominates but, that. But Bobby Wagner, he's a freaky type of athlete. He is. His arms are extremely long. Like, they're deceivingly long. Like, they he, are. he has yeah. some long arms, and he, he's, he's all around. Like, plays defense, can shoot, and, you know, take it to the rim. So it's, it's pretty impressive to see. Joined here by Cliff Avril here on Seahawks Weekly. And. Just recently, um, this past se the season, last year, mm -hmm. you, your father passed away. Mm -hmm. How did that change your outlook on football and on life? Um, well, on life, it's changed from, uh, I mean, that's, that's the first person that I've ever, that was close to me that I've ever lost. So just realizing that it can be gone at any moment, you know, because I, I literally had just got off the phone with him and then, you know, he had a heart attack. So, uh, you know, it just puts things in perspective to enjoy and embrace the opportunities that you have with your family. Uh, my kids, you know, do, <laughs> I try to spend as much time as possible with them. Um, so it, it just makes you appreciate true family, you know, all, all your family members and whatnot. And then as far as for football, I mean, I'm just blessed and happy that, I, you know, I get to play a sport, uh, a game for a living. You know, I've been going, this is my ninth season. I've been blessed to do it, and I appreciate it, you know, but... It boils back down to just being able to spend time with my family. Tell us about your family, Cliff, because uh, you, you did an er interview with us, and yeah. you had your little boy there. Yeah, uh, tell yeah. us uh, how it breaks down. Who, what do you got? So I'm married to my, my college sweetheart. Um, been, with her. <laughs> been with her going on like 10 years, something like that. Um, and then whoa, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, 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 something gonna, like no, that. But we've been married for two years. <laughs> but I'm saying we've been together oh, since, okay. since college. All right. um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't, I don't know when we actually made it official is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, gotcha. but um, and then I have two little boys, uh, a five-year-old, Xavier, and an uh, 11 month old Xander, who is they're tearing up my house right now. Yeah. <laughs> where do you, I mean, Florida, is that where you're going to end up making your home? I, I know it's hard here because it's. You get so ingrained in this community and the twelves, and yep. you know. But what what happens to life after football? I would love to, you know. I, me and my wife actually just had this conversation not too long ago about getting a place here as well, because, you know, just so many different business ventures and different things like that you're able to do out here. But right now we we plan on uh, retiring in Charlotte. Actually, okay. we've been living in Charlotte for the last four years. We moved out there when I first moved out here. Um, and, and we love it out there. It's a, it's a great city. It's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now, obviously, but uh, it's, it's an awesome city. You, you bring up Charlotte, and, and, and of course, last season, um, the Carolina Panthers were in the Super Bowl, so that means that you were probably at home during that time. Did your, did, did your son <laughs> did your son wear any Carolina Panthers gear? Oh, my gosh. No. No, he didn't wear any Panthers gear, but I kid you not, a week being back home, he comes from school, he's dabbing. He's like, oh, oh my gosh, dad, I, besides oh. you, Cam Newton's like my favorite player. <laughs> and he's like, he dabs. I'm like, you've only been here a week. Like, calm down, you know? So, uh, I mean, they were there. I mean, the city was lit. The city was, uh, you know, extremely happy. Oh, that must have hurt you, though. It to did. go and it sit did. in there? It did. Oh. It's your little boy, though, right? It, exactly. It was my little boy. Yeah. But this is what sucks is seeing some of the players <laughs> yeah. throughout the off season, and, you know, they're talking trash because they beat us twice or whatever um, that last season. 
But the one thing that I always tell them at the end of the, uh, you know, all the, the craziness is like, hey, I have a ring. That's right. There you go. So, you know, that's always the, the last little jab. I, at the I, end. I have learned you do not un argue with Uncle Cliff. No, you don't want to do it. Coming up this Monday, uh, yes. September 26th, this Monday, you're going to bring back one of the most popular fundraisers awesome. in Seattle. That's going to happen. You've been doing that, of course, the past two years. Yep. Dining to make a difference. That's going to happen. That's your annual event, your fundraiser, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, your, the Cliff Averill Family Foundation dedicated to increasing awareness of type 2 diabetes in youth and to encourage healthy, of course, healthy living. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Looking forward to this Monday. How can people get involved? How can they help? All that good stuff. Well, the event's actually sold out. It sold out pretty quick this year, which was uh, amazing. I mean, it just shows that, you know, the, the support that you get in the city. Um, you know, it's, it's an event where basically I'd say 50% of the team comes out, all the defense comes out, and we're, we're celebrity waiters. I hate calling us celebrities, but celebrity waiters. And, uh, you know, we're waiters, and, and um, you know, again, it's geared towards my – it goes towards – uh, my foundation, and then we have my man G here. That that's actually going to be the MC of the night, and, and Michael Bennett, auctioneer, and Bennett? whatever you want, whatever oh, you want to call man. yourself, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, well, okay, middle linebacker for the Seattle Seahawks. Hey, I'm a Seahawk. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> what what why uh, type two diabetes, sir? What brought um, that on? So in the Haitian uh, community. Diabetes is very uh, prevalent because, you know, the, the, the diet that they, they, they have. Um, so, like, my mother, my auntie, my, mo my grandmother actually passed away from diabetes. So it just touches home for me, and, and I just felt like, you know, um, I should definitely do something to, to get awareness out about that and how you can combat with just eating healthy. You know, I think nowadays, especially kids, you know, um, a lot of guys are just either watching – football or playing video games nobody's active anymore nobody's outside playing anymore so um you know i, I try to I try to you know get awareness out about the type of things that can happen if you're not active well joined here by cliff Aver here on seahawks weekly and i think it's great that you do that i mm -hmm. think it's great when you athletes have foundations and you're giving back and right now you're talking about type 2 diabetes yes, and sir. i think that's fantastic on the flip side of things cliff it seems like when you speak out about type 2 diabetes, that's okay. Yeah. But if you speak out on anything else, like social injustices that go on, then you need to stick to sports. Yeah. That's How does that make you feel when you hear those comments that happen, both from fans and from media, that you should stick to sports? Well, I, I think that's um, it's unfortunate because, you know, they, they, they don't want you to speak on things that, that actually affects them as well, you know. Um, it, it, again, it's unfortunate, but I, I feel like us as athletes, it's our job to because we're not too far removed from, you know, some of the things that are going on. You know, I've been in the league for nine years. If I wasn't a football player, I'd be, you know, I possibly could be one of these guys that, that's uh, going through some of, the, some of these families, that, what are they're going through, you know. So uh, I think it's unfortunate, and I definitely think as athletes we should, we have, we have a platform and we should, be, we should be heard and we should say something about it because, uh, so many people look up to us, so I, I, it's unfortunate people don't want to hear it, but fortunately on this team we're allowed to voice our opinion, so, and that's what we do. That's it is pretty thing. amazing what Pete, I mean, there's coaches that say it, and there's no those who are, it, yeah. are completely involved in it. No doubt. So talk about that involvement, because, you know, I, we're, we're not there. We hear sure. it, but, you know, talk about just the whole involvement with Pete and how you guys go to him and vice versa. Uh, Coach Carroll's amazing, man. Um, he brought in... <laughs> He, uh, he, he's, not, he's not against, you know, us being able to uh, t uh, talk about some of these different things that are going on. He, most coaches would probably try to, you know, stay away from it, try to, oh, you know, uh, throw it away, like throw it to the side. But he's one of those coaches that he wants to bring people in to talk to us to see how we can come together and try to make a change. And that's amazing. It speaks volumes for him uh, and, and what, he, what he brings to the team. Well, Cliff, I don't want to. I don't want to have you looking too far ahead because we hope you stay in the NFL for like 16, 17 years. I don't. I don't know about that. And you don't know about that. Okay, but I always say to guys, yeah. it's no good on the outside. <laughs> stay in as long as you can. Yeah, but, but it's no good sometimes on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you see yourself doing someday down the road? 
so I'm, I'm, I'm into a lot of real estate. I like real estate. I can sit up at home all night uh, before I go to bed and get on Zillow and, you know, realtor.com and all these different things. Um, that's that's kind of something I'm passionate about. So I can see me and my wife, you know, coming together and, and, and basically flipping homes and, and doing different things like that. Um, make a lot of money. <laughs> and on top of that, you know, we're, we're kind of passionate about it. So I, that's, that's something I'm very interested in. Cool. Well, like and, and maybe, hopefully, someday radio or something, if I'm good enough. Oh, you want to do radio? Oh, 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 yeah. oh, radio, radio. And, 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 and fashion, right? You want to do fashion? I used to, I used to be into fashion, but as you get older, you stop, you stop caring about, you know, <laughs> when, when, what when you wear. What year did you stop caring? <laughs> what year did you stop caring, Cliff? I don't, it's not oh, that I, it's that, not, some people could just wear things and it looks good. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, it's not that I stopped caring about fashion. It's just I don't know if I really want to wrap my head around, you know, trying to uh, – come up with like my own fat, uh, like clothing line or something right, like that right. but I, I mean i like to look good uh, you know when i go to the games and different things like that but i don't know if i wear this but you know uh, I, I i can i can dress it up sometimes you know it would look good with a nice sweatsuit like you have on right now a suit jacket no two, two. <laughs> my point exactly see that's the type of that's the type of stuff you would wear yeah no i was thinking like two super bowl rings another ring yeah would be great that another would be ring good. yeah no if I can get another, if I can get two more rings in the next three yeah. or four years, that'd be amazing. I'd probably never leave Seattle if that's the case. Actually, okay, oh, you, you don't know. You probably There's don't see it. Seattle help that. wouldn't. If you get two or three more <laughs> rings, or at least two more rings, Seattle wouldn't want you to leave. How about that? I would, I would Maybe Seattle it. might build you a house themselves. You stay right here. Uh, well, well, let's work on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cliff. I really appreciate you jumping on with us with Seahawks Weekly. Not only are you a great football player, but you're a great human being. You're a great friend, my man. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you all the time. Wish you all that. the best of luck this season, my man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Hey, but uh, before we go. Oh, oh. Before we go, we didn't talk about your outfit first. <laughs> Let's talk about your outfit. But, 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 but there's people listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there's people here that can see the but, madness. But there's people on the radio that can well, hear this. Why don't we let Clip, since no one can see go ahead. it, why don't we just describe go, go it? Go ahead, describe it. Go ahead. Okay, so you have an aluminum foil uh, <laughs> suit on. <laughs> It's like a some kind of shiny texture of some sort. Okay. You're, you're definitely baking in the inside. I'm hot. You're sweating. Oh, I'm hot. And then you got polka dot shirt on, but then you, you have two different you have two different polka dot type style going on. But you can do that these days. No, uh, yeah. you're, you're, you're thinking about so, the old. You can, you, so you say. So you can you do say. what you want. It looks, it looks terrible. Okay. okay so you say. You. And then what else? and then so it's a silverish, blackish, grayish, whatever color suit you got on. Okay. Then you got brown shoes on. It's like, not brown. Uh, you can't wear it's brown with brown that. No, shoes. that's terrible. It's a neutral shoe. It's, Uncle it's Cliff. brown. It's okay. It's it's brown. It's definitely brown. It, nobody nobody wears that. I'm sorry, G. Nobody, right. nobody would. I, I know. I would. Gee, I, would. I have to dress Brock Hewitt too, so don't worry about it. You know what? Cliff's right. They're brown. They're definitely brown. Yeah. And who wears brown with a, a, a gray down. silver <laughs> suit? Who does hey, that? you know what? If you're driving around in a car, there you have it. That's why I call him Uncle Cliff because sometimes he, he makes just, sense. He <laughs> makes sense. That's Uncle why. Cliff, he just, he just has an old soul, but that's all right though. He's still a great dude. Man, I love you for coming on with us. You're the only dude you. that I love to make fun of me. That's it. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, but don't wear this to the event, please. <laughs> <laughs>